Uh, welcome students, it is a YouTube CV classes. Uh, it is a zoology class and we are presenting for the third class. That is the cordate, zoology. And you all know I am the academic director of the NEET UG of CV classes. And now we will start with the vertebrates, the classes of vertebrates. Hemicordata. So these are the partial chordates. We discussed previous class. They have the internal supporting system that is called the stromocord. So hemicordata. Stromocord. internal support it is ectodermal it is cellular less efficient proboscis gland for excretion. So, body divided in proboscis, collar, and trunk. Example, only a few animals, Balanoglossus, and Sacoglossus. These are the characters of partial chordates or hemichordates. Now we are coming to the most advanced phylum that is the chordata. What are the characters of chordates? Notochord, mesodermal, dorsal. Tubular nerve cord, and pharyngeal gill slit. These are the three basic characters of all phylum chordata. The most important character is the presence of notochord. What is notochord? It is mesodermal in origin that is providing the internal supporting system. And we discussed in the previous class, in some animals the cord, notochord is present throughout the life. In some, like us, the notochord is modified to form vertebral column. So these chordates can be of two types. Protocordata
and y cube data. Protocol data Notochord present or reduced. And in vertebrata, notochord is modified to form vertebral column. In protocotata, we have eurocordata example acid So, what is present in acidia? Notochord reduced in tail region. And another important feature of acidia retrogressive metamorphosis. What is retrogressive? Two things are there. One is the progressive. Larva is forming advanced character progressive. But in some animals, the larva has the advanced characters which may disappear in the adults. Retrogressive. Cephalochordata. Example Amphioxus. What is the character? Notochord present. And it is mostly developed in the frontal part. Throughout the body, the notochord is there, but in the anterior part, head or the cephala, though they don't have true head, Notochord is present. So, since notochord is highly developed in the anterior part, in the head like region, these animals are called cephalochordata. Example, Amphioxus. So, in the second group, vertebrata, the notochord is modified to form vertebral column. So, this vertebrata can be of two types. Agnatha and Nathostomata. Natha, jaw. No jaw, Agnatha. Jaws present, Nathostomata. So the vertebrate without any jaw, paired jaw, cyclical mouth. Agnatha, vertebrate with the paired jaw, fish, frog, snake, birds, bee, 
Nathostomata. Agnatha, the best example Cyclostomata. No jaws. Sartorial mouth. Example. Petromyzen. Example. Mixin. Or petromyzen is sufficient. Nathostomata, paired jaws, enclosed mouth. Classes of vertebrata that is mentioned in the syllabus, the main class characters which we are going to discuss Class Convictus which is a cartilaginous fish second class Ostectus. Bony fish. Third class is amphibia. Fourth class reptilia. Fifth class apes. And the sixth class is mammalia. So, first two. They are Pisces. Fish. Pisces. Fish. What are the major characters? Aquatic. Paired fins with fin rays. So if you see any fish, you will find they have the fins where the bones are there, there is a fin rays. Fins help in navigation in the locomotion. So, body covered by dermal skin.
monocondylic skull. Single occipital condyle. We have dicondylic skull. Pronephric kidney. Ten pairs of cranial nerves. Lateral line sense organ. You will find in both sides of the fish body a line is there having the nerve organ. These are the rio receptors or the pressure receptors. So this is the important characters of the fishes. Convictus Endoskeleton cartilaginous notochord persistent means still present operculum absent. Gill slits present, swim bladder absent. Since swim bladder is absent, the sharks they always have to move in the water. And very important, ureotelism. They excret urea. Male with paired clasper. Clasper is homologous to penis for the transfer of sperm. So, which are the examples of cartilaginous fish? Scoliodon, dogfish. Ray. It can be electric ray. Or it can be spiny ray. Manta. Hammer headed shark. So these are some of the examples of Convictus fish. Ostrichthys bony fish. Endoskeleton, bony, 
operculum present swim bladder present male no clasper example carps which are the carps rohu katlam regular etc the carps catfish which are the catfish the jewel fish the body is devoid of scale silakant it is very important it is also an example of living fossil amphibia skin naked that is no exoskeleton what is the purpose for cutaneous breathing we mentioned earlier frogs can breathe through the moist skin heart three chambered mixed circulation the meaning of the word mixed circulation o2 and co2 blood get mixed up in the ventricle mesonephric kidney Ten pairs of cranial nerves. Example: frog, toad, salamander. They possess tail and. gymnophiona no tail uh, no limb or eye they live in the burrow so do they have any limb or the eye and this gymnophiona they show parental care and very important this amphibia they also possess dicondylic skull like mammal what is dicondylic skull two occipital condyles are present between the bone and the vertebral column like us you know in we have the occipital bone attached with the vertebral column and the two hooks are there for attachment so dicondylic di means two only in the amphibia and in the mammals the dicondylic skull is present uh, so we discussed the some other classes previously that is your uh, class chondrichthys class osteichthys class amphibia if you see the evolutionary trend like origin of life 
fishes originated and survived in the water. First came the chondrichthys fish, then came the ostrichthys fish. That means the first, the cartilaginous fish, came the bony fish. Then some of the bony fish, after evolution, they formed the amphibia. So what are the primary nature of the amphibia? They could survive or they can survive both in water and the land. But the next evolutionary step, the true terrestrial organisms, the first vertebrates which invaded land truly and survived only on the land. These animals belong to the class Reptilia. So reptiles are the first true terrestrial animals. And if you remember, when we are exposed to sunlight, the external harsh environment, we have to develop in some exoskeletal structures. What are the exoskeletal structures in human body? We have the hair, we have the epidermis uh, covering, everything is here. So when the reptiles first invaded land, truly, then they also have some protection to cover their body. What are the protections? Dry, dead epidermal scales. They are not the living cells, they are the dry scales. If you remember, the snakes regularly have to shed their skin, right? Because the scales are dead. But fishes, they don't have to shed their skin because the fish skin is the dermal scale. The fish scale is dermal scale that can grow along with the age of the fish. But what is happening in case of the reptiles, the animals are growing bigger, but the outer covering, the outer exoskeleton is not growing. It is old, it is smaller. So the reptiles, most of the reptiles, they have to shed the exoskeleton regularly. So since they are the first two terrestrial animals, they develop some exoskeletal structures. So what are the characters? The first, exoskeleton. What are the exoskeleton? Epidermal, dry, dead, scale, skewed, carapace. Scale present on the snake body. Skewed are the fine granular scales, they are present on the lizard body. If you observe any home lizard with any magnifying glass or anything, you will find the small scales, they are covering the body. What are the plastrons of the carapace? They are covering the body of the tortoise. The long surviving animals of the tortoise, their body is covered by heart covering. They are called the plastron and the carapace. So the first point, they have the exoskeletal structure of the epidermal, dry, dead scale, skewed and carapace. It is a scale. Second point, pulmonary breathing. By lungs. So it started in amphibia. If you remember in amphibia, they have three modes of respiration. First, it is a cutaneous respiration by the moist skin. Second, they have the pulmonary breathing. When they are on the land, when the frog is on the land, the breathing is by pulmonary exchange of gases along with the skin. But when the reptiles first invaded the land, they started the aerial breathing, the pulmonary breathing. So starting from reptiles, birds and the mammals, all these groups, they started the pulmonary breathing. They used to take the air from the environment for gaseous diffusion. So the pulmonary breathing is there. The next advancement is little bit the structure of the kidney. In case of the fish, the pronephric kidney is there. Amphibian mesonephric kidney. But in case of the reptiles, then subsequently in the birds and the man mammals, the kidney is the metanephric. The metanephric kidney is the most advanced kidney as we discussed earlier in the first class where the Bowman's capsule is there, then the loop of Henle must have to be there and the glomerulus. So the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule there for ultra filtration of the blood and the long coiled loop of Henle is mainly for the osmoregulation. That is mainly for water regulation. Why? 
since these animals are terrestrial, the continuous evaporation from the body is there, water is going out due to the sunlight. So osmoregulation is very important. This osmoregulation is mainly by metanephric kidney having long coiled loop of Henle. That is why in reptiles, birds, mammals, the metanephric kidney is there. The primary function, osmoregulation, water conservation, etc. So the next point we are coming, it is the metanephric kidney. And this metanephric kidney is also present in birds and mammals. Uh, we are coming to the next point. Excretory material. That is uric acid. Uric acid is least toxic as we discussed earlier because less amount of water, least amount of water is required to remove it out. So, the removal of uric acid or uricotelism is found in insecta, reptiles and in the birds and also in the embryo that is developing inside the shell. Since uric acid is least toxic, minimum toxic, it can be retained in the body for a long period. That is why these animals which take less amount of the water, they excrete uric acid, the least toxic nitrogenous waste from the body. Next point, heart, three chambers. Also in the amphibians, the heart is three chambered, two auricles and the one ventricle. But what is the evolution here? In case of the reptiles, an incomplete partition is developing inside the ventricle chamber. It is an incomplete septa. So it is not causing complete division of the ventricle, an incomplete partition is there. That means the evolution is going on. First, if you remember in the fish, two chambered heart, came the amphibia, three chambered heart, two auricles, single ventricle, reptilia, two auricles, single ventricle, but in the ventricle a partition or septa is developing, but that is incomplete. But in crocodiles, the fourth chambered heart is there. The most advanced surviving reptile is the crocodile, where the fourth chambered heart is there, like birds and in the mammals. So here, in general, the three chambered heart and also the mixed circulation. Portal circulation present. RBC with nucleus. So, this is some point circuiting the circulatory system. Uh, the next advancement in the animals after the amphibian is the formation of amnion in embryonic state. What is amnion? If you remember, you also studied in the embryology part, the reproductive unit. It is a fluid filled sac, amnion, inside which the embryo develops for protection, shock absorption, everything. So amnion evolved first in reptiles. And this amnion is also present in birds and the mammals. So the next point is amnion or amniota. What is amniota? Embryo develops inside
एमनियोटिक सैक एंड हैविंग एमनियोटिक फ्लूड सो दिस कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इज कॉल्ड द एमनियोटा so this amniota is also the characteristic of birds and the mammals next cranial nerves in fish and amphibia the number of cranial nerves is 10 right there are the 10 pairs of cranial nerves but in reptiles the 12 pairs of cranial nerves evolved two extra the last two on 11th and the 12th and this 12 pairs of cranial nerves they are also present in birds and mammals so cranial nerves 12 pairs also in birds and mammals so you see this important vital similarities between the reptiles birds and the mammals prove that from reptiles evolved evolved birds and mammals you also studied evolution archaeopteryx is there the extinct bird which is a connecting link between the reptiles and the birds If you remember, the prototheria or egg-laying mammals are there. This egg-laying character is a reptilian character. So these mammals, they are also intermediate between the reptile and the mammal. So reptiles evolved some common important characters from where, which are also present in the birds and the mammals. Primarily the metanephric kidney, true pulmonary ventilation, then the development of the amnion and the twelve pairs of cranial nerves. reproduction so these animals are also dioecious dioecious means male and female they are separate and they also have internal fertilization that means the sperm is transferred inside the female reproductive tract by some structures like penis hemipenis so the fertilization occurs inside the female body so reptiles are also oviparous they lay fertilized eggs outside the body but some exceptions are also there except python chameleon some exceptions are always there exceptions are the rule of the nature that is in the chameleon in some pythons not always the viviparity is there that is a live babies may come out examples of reptiles you studied in evolution dinosaurs became extinct after the jurassic period triassic jurassic then the dinosaurs became extinct for millions of years dinosaurs used to rule the earth huge animals maybe herbivores maybe carnivores but after the meteorite explosion in the california one of the theories all dinosaurs became extinct within a few years so it is very important because the dinosaurs became extinct so that paved the pathway for the evolution of birds and mammals so now it is dinosaurs are totally extinct which groups of reptiles are present on the earth two groups of reptiles anapsida and diapsida 
Which of the anapsidans? They have the fused skull. That is tortoise and the turtle. And the diapsida, they don't have the fused skull. The skull bones are separate, but not totally fused. So anapsida and the diapsida are the true groups of reptiles which are persisting today. Turtle, tortoise, snake, lizard, crocodiles, etc. So the best example, turtle. Tortoise, terrapin. They are the group of the animals, very ancient animals, right? Snakes, lizards, the most surviving reptiles. What is the fundamental difference in case of the snakes? The limbs are vestigial. Tympanum, it is an eardrum, absent. And eyelids, not movable. This tympanum or ear structure, its absence is very important. That is why snakes cannot hear any sound. So it is a misconception that snakes can hear sound. Actually, they cannot hear any sound. They can see the movement of any object. And according to that, they can move their head or the hood. But they can feel the vibration with their ventral scales and other structures. But what is the difference between the lizards and the snakes? In case of the lizards, Eyelids, movable, tympanum, present. So that is the fundamental difference between the lizard and the snake. Lizards can hear sound, but snakes can't hear any sound. They can see only the movement, according to which they can move their head and the hood. Some lizards, example, Hemidactylus, it is a house lizard. Domesticated, we can see in the walls and everything, that is the Hemidactylus. Calotus, garden lizard, chameleon, it is also garden lizard but can change color. They have the prehensile tail just to remain attached with the tree branches and they also have the viviparous. Heloderma, it is also called beaded monster. It is an example of poisonous lizard. But hemidactylis is non-poisonous, but Heloderma is poisonous. It is found in the South Africa. It was shown in the James Bond movie, The Quantum of Solex. Komodo dragonensis. It is the largest lizard. 
It is found in the Komodo Island of Indonesia. And it was also shown in the James Bond movie, The Skyfall, if you can remember, the fighting is going on, Macau. So that is the Komodo Dragonensis. So these are examples of some of the lizards. When we are seeing the snakes, it can be non-poisonous. That is python, anaconda, boa, etc. They don't have any poison, very weak snakes. So they are the constrictors, boa constrictor. They capture the prey, they constrict the prey to break the rib cage. Then what happens? Suffocation is there, paralysis is there. Then they totally swallow the animal. Snakes cannot chew. They swallow the animal. They take the animal and by peristalsis action, the animal is sucked inside. And what are the arrangement of the teeth? The teeth are curved inside, so the animals cannot come out. The more it is trying to come out, the animal, the prey, then it is more entangled by the teeth, which is curved inward, and by the peristalsis suction that is taken inside. Poisonous snake. So in the upper jaw, fang is there attached with the poison gland. So it is a poison gland which is actually the salivary gland of the snake. And it is a fang. that acts as hypodermic syringe. Hypodermic means hypi means the below, dermis is the skin. So when they are biting any animal, the teeth is puncturing the skin, it is puncturing the muscle, then by squeezing the poison gland, they deliver the poison. That can cause paralysis or other effects to the prey animal. So that is the fang and that is the poison gland and that is the arrangement of the teeth curved inward and main thing they don't have any jaw articulation so they can swallow the very big animals. Snake poisons can be cytotoxic or neurotoxic. Cytotoxic means the toxins which can break the RBC, they can break the cells. Tremendous pain is there, then the animal dies. And the neurotoxics that affects the brain, that can cause asphyxiation, stoppage of the breathing and paralysis. Then the animal swallow it. So the examples of the poisonous snakes, viper, it is cytotoxic, cobra, great, neurotoxic. So these are the snakes, example. A very important group of the reptile is crocodile. You will study in the evolution part the sauropsida and the synapsida group of the reptiles give rise to crocodile and all modern reptiles. So when you see the crocodiles, the largest surviving reptiles now is the crocodile. So the crocodiles have some unique characters. Crocodiles have four chambered heart. Crocodiles have diaphragm. Crocodiles have thecodont dentition. The meaning of the word thecodont dentition, teeth is present inside the jaw socket. So these are the mammalian characters.
Birds also have four chambered heart, but in case of the birds, the diaphragm or the thigodon dentition is not there. The normal surviving birds, except the archaeopteryx, now no bird has any teeth just to reduce the body weight. So these are the mammalian characters of crocodiles, which prove that from crocodile-like dinosaurs evolved the present-day mammals. So reptiles are a very unique group of the animals, right? Now from the reptiles evolved the class apes having the birds and the class mammalia. So now we will start with the class apes. Class apes, birds, aerial or true flying vertebrates. The fifth one. So, what are the main characters? Four limbs, we are the tetrapoda, just remember there are two groups, Pisces and tetrapoda. Which animals are tetrapoda having the four limbs? Amphibians, reptilians, birds and mammals, we are tetrapoda because we have the four limbs. In case of the birds, the two four limbs, they are modified to form wings. Hind limbs are there for walking and the four limbs, they are modified by for flying by forming the wings. So the true four, true four limbs, they are modified to form wings. Exoskeleton, feather, it has Keratin protein. Coming the biomolecule part. In the biomolecule you have studied, the keratin protein is a secondary structure polypeptide, alpha helical. So, again, the question may be coming from both the biomolecule part and the animal kingdom part, the keratin protein present on the bird feather or they may twist the question in that way, hair, nail and feather is formed by polypeptide having the structure, primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure, quaternary structure without mentioning the name. So it will be the secondary structure polypeptide. Because you remember in the neat examination, the question may come intermingling the different chapters. Feathers, hair, nail formed by keratin protein. You studied the nature of the keratin protein. It is a secondary structure polypeptide. So they may intermingle the chapters. In that way, the question may be there. Everything is there in the syllabus. So exoskeleton, feather, big scale. Scales are present where in the hind limbs, reptilian character. Heart, four chambered, double circulation. RBC with nucleus. Air sac present. Other characters we know metanephric kidney, uricoterism. Amniota, (laughs) 
मोनोकॉन्डाइलिक स्काल वी डिस्कस टर्लियर दिस इज आल्सो प्रेजेंट मोनोकॉन्डाइलिक स्काल इज आल्सो इन द रेप्टाइल एंड फिश स्किन ग्लैंड्स एब्सेंट crop milk it is a secretion what is the purpose to feed the young normally the parents the birds they try to collect the small animals insect everything to feed the newborn but if those materials are not available they secrete something from the crop digestive tract which is fed to the newborn that is called the crop milk it is not milk it is a secretion from the crop gland birds what are the other characters of the birds pneumatic bone very important pneumatic bone which is hollow bone marrow absent teeth absent urinary bladder absent single ovary why to reduce body weight this is the flying animals they have to reduce the body weight by eliminating this structure teeth is heavier they have the strong beak they don't store their urine in the urinary bladder that weight is reduced two ovaries are there in normally in other animals but in birds the single ovary is there to reduce weight because they are flying they have to reduce their body weight example non flying bird ostrich having the largest egg which is the largest cell kiwi hummingbird can fly backward okay other examples are there so this is the examples of the birds now we are coming to the last class of the animal kingdom the most probably the most important class that is the class mammalia but you must remember for the neat examination two columns will be there one will be the exclusive mammalian character present only in the mammals and some will be the general characters may be present in some other groups so exclusive mammalian character and the general characters we have to make the two categories right because the question can be said in that way the exclusive character that will be very confusing so i am making the column then you will understand so the mammalian 
the two characters will be there exclusive character and general character so what are the exclusive characters that is present only in the mammals not present in any other group mammary gland which is vestigial in male male also possesses the mammary gland but it is vestigial it is functional only in the female except protoheria skin gland sudorific gland also present on the skin body here you see the bird body is covered by the feather reptile the scales are there but hair is present only on the mammals external ear or pinna absent in birds absent in snakes other groups seven cervical vertebra lion tiger giraffe human cat rat bat in all animals the seven cervical vertebra are present the number is always seven it may be the giraffe it may be the rat it may be the cat the seven cervical vertebra are there but one exception is there that is sloth it may be six to eight sartori cells in testis you study the reproductive system the sartori cells are there which are the nerve cells of the sustentacular cells these are present only in the mammals corpus callosum what is corpus callosum if you remember this is the transverse band of the nerve fibers present between the two cerebral hemisphere mammalian character exclusive corpora quadrigemina you also studied in the brain in the mid brain we have the corpora quadrigemina these are the exclusive mammalian characters and the general characters which are present in mammals but may be present in other animals that is your fourth chambered heart a uh, warm blooded homeothermal this character is also present in birds birds are also warm blooded pulmonary breathing diaphragm diaphragm is also present in crocodiles Thecodon dentition also present in crocodile. So these are the characters. You know the metanephric kidney, ureotelism. amniota 12 pairs of cranial nerves so these are the general characters of the mammals right so these are the exclusive characters these are the general characters just try to remember the question can be said in that way
So when we are seeing the mammal here, so what are the groups? Prototheria and theria. Prototheria egg laying mammals cloaca present. Tail on body, these are reptile character. Another mammary gland, diaphragm. Four chambered heart, these are mammalian characters. So these prototherians, why they are important, you studied in the evolution. The prototherians prove we mammals evolved from reptiles. So these are the intermediate between reptiles and the mammals. The question may come from the evolution chapter. The reptilian characters are present, cloaca, egg laying. Normally we mammals, we are the viviparous, they are the oviparous. Scales from the body, oviparity. So which are the examples? Ornitho. Rhynchus, also called duck billed platypus. Tachyglossus, it is scaly anteater. So these are intermediate between reptiles and the mammals. Theria, live babies are born. They are not eggling. So here, live babies are born. From the mother's body, the live babies, they are coming out. We human beings, you study in the reproduction part, the parturition part. So this theria can be of two different types. Metatheria and eutheria. What is the difference in metatheria? Marsupium which is the extra abdominal pouch with the nipples present. So what is marsupium? Extra abdominal pouch with nipples, they are present. What's the significance? You see in the kangaroo and everything, you saw the pictures, where the immature newborn, they are kept inside the pouch, the nipples are there, so the baby is getting food. That means they are not developing entirely inside the uterus like us. 
immature babies are born, multiple, kept in the pocket. When the nipples are there, they are getting full. And when the baby is mature, jumping out from the mother's abdominal pouch. Example, kangaroo. And which are the eutherians? So I'm mean, just uh, writing in a proper way. It is marsupium. So these animals are marsupium. And what is eutheria? V. Placental mammal. And testis inside. Scrotal sac. Just remember here marsupiums are present. So the animals are marsupial. Kangaroo studied in the evolution endemic species of Australia. These are the placental mammals mainly evolved in Asia and the Africa. Comparisons are there in the evolution chapter. So why animal kingdom is important even during in the chapter evolution chapter you will find the comparative studies are there. Intermediate animals are there. So you cannot ignore this chapter animal kingdom because you will find in each and every chapter of the zoology, animals are always there. So this concept has to be clear. That's why I'm mentioning all the points here. That will help you in the later chapters. So that is the eutheria and some of the orders of the eutheria, last point. In eutheria, some orders are there. It can be primata. So what is present in primata? Menstrual cycle. Opposable thumb. Blood group. The highest group of the mammals. So, which can be the examples? Which are the examples? It is a human. Chimpanzee. Baboon. Gorilla. Order can be proboscida, example, elephant, where trunk is modified nose and upper lip. It can be Chiroptera, which are the Chiropterans? Bat, the true flying mammals of the bat where the important character is Pathagia, which is the skin fold, what is the purpose? Flying. It can be Cetacea. Example Will, which is the largest 
animal, the largest mammal. So, these are some of the orders of mammalia. Why I mentioned this thing? Two years back in the neat examination, order came. Arteodactyla and perissodactyla, though that is not mentioned in the NCRT. That is why I mentioned some of the important orders. And you will study the order primata again in the human evolution. Right? So you see, it's a very big chapter, the animal kingdom, a very big chapter, very important chapter. Most of the students tend to ignore this chapter, but it is very important because entirely the class level and maximum part of the class 12, more than 40% is dealing with the animals. So if the concept is clear regarding the animal kingdom, then it will be easier to understand the other physiology chapters, evolution, animal husbandry, everything. So, I discuss most of the important points for your NCRT. That will help you understand, try to understand it. That's all for today, discussion and everything. And we will meet on the next class. Hope you like the class, you like the discussion and everything. So, if you liked it, Please subscribe the channel, the class, and please share with your friends. Why? Because it will be beneficial for you and that may also help us to grow for more communication.